when you did the multiple sequence alignment using either muscle or cluster, you you saw that you have the alignment which inserts gaps so that you can line up the amino acids or you could do that with DNA sequence also. You guys did it with the protein. Um, and then when you have the, the alignment made, you could click on a tab that was for a phylogenetic tree. So today I'm going to show you the different types of trees because that one just says phylogenetic. And I alluded to, look, you could click cladogram or real, and I didn't elaborate on that. But I wanted you to already start thinking there are different ways to display the same data or the same tree. And uh, that's what we're going to go learn today. The terminology, some of it comes from computer science, some of it comes from biology. So for some of these things that are two words for the same thing, just like gap and indel, remember indel is short for insertion deletion, and then gap is the indel, that's the how computer scientists call it when you put a, a hyphen to account for that indel. All right, so I'm sharing the file with you today's lecture, but hopefully you will participate. There, there is some interactive things that I might make polls or you just write the answer on the chat. Um, polls get more people answering, like participating. So there'll be a mix and match of that. All right, so and you saw the terminology uh, phylogenetic tree before when we ran that the multiple sequence alignment tool. And now you're going to learn, okay, what's that? And what are the different types? So what should you know from today? Uh, I want you to be able to interpret the phylogenetic tree. That's, that's the main thing, which is, I showed you that we interpret going from the innermost nodes to the outermost nodes. We're going to do that again and again so that you will be you will have some practice at that. So which identities are, or I think I meant entities here, are most closely related to which? And those are whichever are in the innermost nodes. You know what that means when you see a figure of it. And then which organism evolved from which, you can learn that from phylogenetic trees if that's what the phylogenetic tree is showing. So if there are many organisms, then you are figuring out which ones are, um, which are the ancestors. Often we don't actually have DNA or protein sequence for the from the ancestor, but we can see the present day species, how do they relate to each other and then we can postulate the existence of an ancestor. Um, so there is something called the most recent common ancestor. So sometimes we actually have this, but most times not. And maybe fossils, that, that's where you would get DNA sequence from the most recent common ancestor. OK, these are the things where computer science, they say edge, and in biology, say branch. And they are the same thing, and what and they may have different lengths or not. And sometimes the different length matters, meaning it carries information. And other other times, it's just a matter of style. So you're going to know when no when is uh, the length matters when not. And uh, the the nodes. Uh, what do the nodes mean? And, and that depends on what entities you are uh, comparing the tree. So these guys here, why some nodes, why the nodes with three branches are called unresolved. So there will be nodes that are resolved and others that are unresolved. And why do we call it unresolved? So it's basically, we don't have the full information here. And uh, therefore, our, our, our tree will have more than three branches in that one node. You see, you see an example of that. And uh, you don't know yet what a rooted tree is, but you will see. 
and then and um, we people like to have some direction so it, it's it just makes more sense for us to understand things when you know where to start and when to end and then we like rooting trees for that but we can't always root trees you will see us a technique on how to do that um and then this when people say this uh, ancestor has existed this many millions of years ago so like how do they do that it might be carbon dating but you know that's when they go out to the carbon now this is either carbon dating or uh in the case of phylogenetics we use the number of mutations so how do they do that we look at the number of mutations and not just any mutation you will see it has to be the neutral mutations and last we may not have time for this but it's one slide the this new notation is how do you tell the computer to draw the tree because when you're typing code you can't really draw the branches but the computer needs to have a way to figure out relationships in, in between the entities. So that's what the new notation is about. And it's, it relies on the use of parentheses, as you will see. All right, so this is an example that I found in a paper that I thought was interesting. The paper was the, phylogenetic, the phylogeny of Little Red Riding Hood. So people took, you know, the story of Little Red Riding Hood and they saw what, what countries have a story that is very similar. So they compared the stories and then they made this thing, which is uh, so it's showing phylogeny. So that showing the relationships of which stories are most, most closely related to which. And like you don't have to learn any of specifically this. I'm only telling you these things so that you can make sense of this tree. But uh, this atu is something for in literature. They, it's, it was however it is that they, they number uh, when you're cataloging stories. So the three, three, three is Little Red Riding Hood. And then the one, two, three is some story called The Wolf and the Kids which you know, it's similar to Little Red Riding Hood. And then you're trying to see how closely related these are. And there are other ones too. So there are other stories. And I don't know if when you grow up, if you're told that uh, she got eaten up by the wolf and then saved later, no, or not. When I was a child, the story I was told is that the wolf ate her up and the grandma and then the, the hunter opened the belly of the wolf and they're still alive inside that's kind of amazing but the, the story i told nina when she was little the wolf or the hunter gets there right before disaster so anyway little variations and that's what this is trying to show so when you look at this can you make any conclusions from that story i'll give you a minute to look at that the most important skill that I'm trying to convey here is what do these dots mean? And what does this clade, so like this branch over here, see how they branch together? So how do you conclude from that? <laughs> 